penalized sports that have zero problems whatsoever, that have zero incidents uh, of any kind. It's not so that wasn't him on the video screaming at those people and using profanity repeatedly and that's directing not. people off the road? That that's, wasn't him? That's not what I'm saying. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Because that's not a legal analysis. He has had so many days of doing such wonderful legal activity that the illegal activity he committed on a particular date shouldn't count. Okay, is that it? Yes, ma'am. Okay, the motion for bond is denied after hearing the 911 call and the testimony of that witness who had little to no credibility, frankly. Hello, folks, and welcome back to True Crime Phenomenon. This is Josh coming back to you with another video. I had to uh, re record this because I had some audio issues, but. Uh, this is Jeremy DeWitt's Bond Hearing Part 4. Uh, we've got a lot of good information here on Ramsey's testimony. And um, I'm also going to be uploading a uh, internal affairs interview, one that's never been heard online before. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And, you know, kind of a public service announcement here, everybody. I don't delete comments unless they're really rude and snarky. If they're just comments and they're maybe critical of me, I'll leave them there, okay? So please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the other side. Thank you so much. And is that where the bulletin, that's where the source of that bulletin was that you discussed earlier? Correct, yes, sir. She jumped, she had uh, contacted the uh, Windermere Police Department when she realized that they had arrested him for impersonating a police officer. And, uh, Detective Allen had contacted me knowing that I was part of the uh, investigation into Metro State uh, and asked that I meet with him with her because she had uh, multiple concerns about her safety and uh, Mr. DeWitt being out. Okay. And so I guess whether what she says is true or not, is that something that you would have to take very seriously? Correct, yes. Okay. Uh, may I approach the witness? Yes. I'm showing you what's marked as face D for identification. Do you recognize what it is? I do. Um, is that the bulletin um, that went out based on this conversation that you had? Yes, and it's the same one that's still posted in many of our uh, substations and the main sheriff's office. So it's still posted? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, at this time, I would um, move to enter states D into evidence as states 1 at this point. I don't think we've got anything entered. Council? Yeah, Sean, I don't know if Jacob was asked that he provided to me at some point from the state. I've never seen that before. This, yeah, and this is the first copy I received. I, I can provide another copy. Okay. Good idea. According, that could be wrong, but that's my count. For identification, do you recognize this composite? Yes, I do recognize these. And can you um, describe, is it how many photos? It's five. Okay. Um, can you describe each photo in turn and and uh, let us know where it comes from? Yes. So the first photo is uh, of the uh, the weapon that I uh, recovered from uh, Mr. DeWitt when I arrested him October 30th of 2019. Uh, it's the the weapon that he had on him, which is a it looks like a Glock firearm uh, with a magazine that's taken out of it and the slide is pulled back and locked back on this particular picture. On this one also at the bottom, there's a screw piece, which is where you would put like a CO2 cartridge because this is actually a uh, paintball type gun. Okay. Uh, the next picture is the weapon that was taken off of him on March uh, 23rd, 2021. Uh, this is a replica of a uh, Glock. Uh, it has a light on it, like the uh, same as what we carry in our law enforcement weapons. Uh, as a matter of fact, this weapon looks just like mine. Uh, it has the same magazine style at the bottom as mine. It has the same style grips. 
and this also turned out after it was um, the slide was pulled back and the magazine was dropped. That's when it was turned out that we knew it was not a firearm. It was a uh, another pepper ball gun. Uh, a what gun? A pepper ball gun. Mm -hmm. And it was not loaded. It was just a pepper ball gun and a, a law enforcement style holster on a law enforcement style belt. Um, that's the one that was taken off just recently. The next picture is uh, of the Seminole County funeral escort that he was doing. That's the one with all the motorcycles, the Buffalo Soldiers. It was for a correction officer. And is this one? Uh, is that from a video that was published to the court today? Yes, so it is. This is when he's approaching the car that he was beating on and screaming at to pull over. Uh, as he's walking up to the car, you can see in the reflection of the car, him holding his, uh, with his right hand, he's holding the top of what looks like a firearm. Uh, the next picture is a, a more clear picture even of him with his index finger and ring finger pointing downward, his ring, uh, or middle finger, his ring finger and pinky finger uh, appears to be clasping under like gripping the handle as if he was getting ready to draw the weapon as he's walking up to this individual screaming at him and giving him orders and uh, direction to stay where he was. The last picture is a picture of uh, while he was on this particular funeral escort, he was running out of gas and he was able to coast into the gas station. And uh, when he pulled out his wallet, you could clearly see with his body cam, his driver's license, uh, and there's other parts of this, but that's his wallet, his credit cards, and it happens to be the same wallet and credit cards and badge that's in there that uh, I confiscated from him when I arrested him back in October 30th of 2019. Okay. Um, and these are uh, fair and accurate depictions of these items and these screenshots um, that you took. Yes, sir. Okay. And at this time, uh, the state would move to enter states C into evidence as uh, states two. Okay. okay. Be, uh, be admitted. Yeah. yeah. Is that all on one page or multiple There's pages? Multiple okay. Composite. Yeah, it's a composite. And before you give it to Jill, you need to turn it over and and mark it A, B, C, and so forth. You do that. I can. No. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. Just want to make sure we know what we're talking about. Yes, it's one through five. C one through C five. Yes. E for identification. Do you recognize what that is? I do. Um, and what is that? This is a, uh, a, a, a printout of a YouTube page, and the uh, highlighted part on the front of the page is Metro State DPU, and it is a uh, arrest warrant for uh, a uh, Victor Lopez, who was one of the employees for uh, Mr. DeWitt, who also. Uh, wound up coming to the sheriff's office and uh, asking to be a witness and has now been a witness in multiple cases uh, against Mr. DeWitt. Is this What's a, the name again, please? I'm sorry, Victor Lopez. Victor Lopez. Is this um, like a still shot from YouTube? Like what is this? 
Correct. Yes, it's a still shot of a uh, arrest warrant page with uh, Mr. Lopez's face on it, and uh, his, basically his demographics, his date of birth, his race, sex, height, uh, his weight. Is, uh, is this a still shot from a video that's posted? Yes, it is. Is this a video that you've watched on YouTube? I, I've seen parts of it, yes, sir. Okay, and you've accessed it on YouTube? Yes, I have. Do you recognize who, um, do you know how YouTube works generally? Usually you have like a uh, individual who creates the account and then uh, they put, they, it's like blogging, they blog with it. Uh, it. It can be profitable. So the more you get uh, viewers, the more money you can make. Do you recognize the, the user or the YouTube handle that posted this video? Yes, it's uh, a day in the life of Jeremy DeWitt, and uh, this is something that Mr. DeWitt has been doing for the last several months. He's been putting out these videos almost on a daily basis. Jack, I rule. Um, He's been putting out these videos on a daily basis, uh, basically showing contempt for anybody who's not for him. <laughs> Is it Jeremy DeWitt that speaks in these videos? Yes, it is. It's, okay. it's a video of him riding around, uh, continued to, to do the same uh, funeral escorts and other escorts, uh, the way, you know, breaking the law, basically. He's video recording himself doing it. And in this particular video that was posted um, under that channel, um, what is the title of that uh, posting? Vidler Snitch 2. What kind of... I'm sorry. Vidler, Vidler Snitch 2. And that would be for uh, Sergeant Keith Vidler, who's the other detective, I guess you can call, on this case. Okay. Um, does Victor Lopez appear in this video? Uh, I, in, in a couple of spots, he does. And you've spoken with him before? Yes, I have. Multiple you, times. You recognize his voice in that video? Absolutely. Okay. Um, and... Did you ever see his face in that video? Uh, yes. I think in one of, one of the spots you have a camera view that, uh, from what I remember seeing, of uh, him being in front of, I believe, Mr. DeWitt's office building. Okay, so that's going to wrap it up for part four of Jeremy DeWitt's bond hearing. This is Josh from True Crime Phenomenon. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I will catch you on the flip side. And a special announcement, we will have a, another video this weekend, either tomorrow or the next day, most likely tomorrow, where I will actually do one of the unheard interviews. So watch out for that unheard interview coming tomorrow, Saturday, or Sunday. See you there.